In this video, we're going to have a look at simple harmonic motion, and we're going to relate it to the second order differential equations that we looked at to date. So let's define what simple harmonic motion actually is. Well, the first feature is that it's motion where the acceleration is always towards a fixed point. The second feature is the magnitude of the acceleration is proportional to the distance or the displacement of the particle from the fixed point. So writing this down mathematically, we get the acceleration, so d2x by dt squared, displacement differentiated twice, acceleration, equals kx. So what this says is that the acceleration is proportional to the displacement. Now we're not quite done yet, because we pointed out in the first point that the acceleration is always towards the fixed point. So if it's always towards the fixed point, but proportional to the distance, then when the particle moves further away from the fixed point, the acceleration wants to pull it back. So that negative sign is necessary, and we need to restrict k being a positive real number. So k is a member of R+. plus. So just to explain that again, if the acceleration is always towards a fixed point, the displacement is the distance it moves away from the fixed point. Therefore, if it's moving away from the fixed point, its acceleration needs to be negative to pull it back towards the fixed point. Now, a different way of writing this, and many of the textbooks write it this way, is d2x by dt squared equals minus omega squared x, which guarantees the constant being positive, and then the negative sign makes it negative, where omega is a real number. Now, just to introduce some notation that you're expected to know, dots above a variable mean differentiated with respect to t. So two dots above x means x differentiated twice with respect to t. So that's a different way of writing d2x by dt squared. So a different way of writing this is x double dot equals minus omega squared x. x with a single dot would simply be dx by dt x differentiated with respect to time once. So I've written on the same line there in black and blue the equivalent statement twice just in different notation. So to try and get a picture of what simple harmonic motion looks like we're now going to try and solve this differential equation here. So we've got d2x by dt squared equals minus, minus omega squared x. So let's rearrange it in the format that we're used to seeing a differential equation in the second order. So d2x by dt squared plus omega squared x equals zero. Finding the auxiliary equation, we get m squared plus omega squared. There's no middle term, there's no sing, uh, first differential of x, so equals zero. Solving that, m squared equals minus omega squared, which means that m equals plus or minus omega i. So it's a complex number with only an imaginary part to be precise. So we know that a second order differential equation with only imaginary roots takes solution of the form x equals a sine omega t plus b cos omega t. And you know from studying a single maths that this can be rewritten in the form we will combine both the sine and cos terms into r sine of omega t plus alpha. So using the compound angle formulae, we can combine that into a single entity like that. So basically, this whole differential equation reduces to a sine function. So given that the differential equation reduces to a sine function, we know that the function must be periodic with period. Normally it would be 2 pi for an ordinary sine function. But actually, because we've multiplied by omega, multiplied here the t by omega, we'll stretch it by scale factor 1 over omega. So the period is now 2 pi over omega. We can also see from this function that it'll have maximum displacement r. So max displacement r also called, in physics, the amplitude. 
Now the best way to visualize simple harmonic motion is by a weight on a spring bobbing up and down but not losing any energy. So the spring doesn't lose energy, it doesn't damp, it just goes up and down all the time. Now we know in reality it's impossible to keep, uh, to keep motion going perpetually. However, this is an ideal model. So if we play this animation, we'll see the weight bobbing up and down over time, forming a sine wave. So let's play it and see. So this is ideal simple harmonic motion. So just so you know, I got the animation from Fizz Clips, and you can get it at this website here. So it's quite a good website with plenty of physics resources on. Okay, so let's just summarize. So summary. So simple harmonic motion, quite often abbreviated SHM, is described by D2X by dt squared equals minus omega squared x or exactly the same equation but a different notation x double dot equals minus omega squared x with no dots above it the solution to this second order differential equation is x equals a sine of omega t plus b cos of omega, omega t which can be rewritten as x equals r sine of omega t plus alpha using the compound angle formulae where alpha is yet to be determined as is r so that's the basics of simple harmonic motion the next video will be a question on simple harmonic motion. For more videos like this, subscribe to our YouTube channel. And to find out more about our Skype tuition and revision courses, go to alevelmathsrevision.com.